Morning guys, AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial or walkthrough of the MSI Afterburner application which makes it very easy to overclock your GPU, NVIDIA, or AMD. We'll go over some reasons why you might want to overclock your GPU and some reasons you might not want to. And if you decide that overclocking is the route for you, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Let's get it. All right, you big bucking stallions, I wanna go over real quick why you might want to or might not want to overclock your GPU. Now, as with overclocking any component of your PC, the CPU, the RAM, or the graphics card itself, there is a certain risk factor if you don't know what you're doing or you get too aggressive with your overclock, i.e. you're not doing a conservative, moderate overclock where you do your research and find out from the community that owns your CPU, RAM, GPU, what is a overclock that's gonna give you consistently better performance ever so slightly performance to where you're basically squeezing or wringing out a little additional performance out of your components without risking additional heat that your case and fans cannot handle or also electricity problems that your power supply cannot supply. But having said that, if you are doing a moderate or conservative overclock on any component, the risks are extremely minimal. In fact, when these components come out of the manufacturing plant, they're basically rated for slightly higher performance and then they clock them down ever so slightly to give them longer life, but do you really plan on having the same CPU for 10 or 15 years? Probably not. You're probably gonna build another PC within that time frame, or at least upgrade that one component. Less than 15 years, you might be getting 12 or 13 years of life out of an overclock component. Myself personally, and the majority of people out there would probably rather have better performance for the time that they're actually using that component than getting a couple of years of life on the back end that they're probably not even gonna have that component. Second is the misconception that overclocking voids your warranty. With the majority of these components, there is no way for the manufacturer to tell if it was overclocked unless it is completely fried out to where you can't return it to the stock clock. So that's pretty much it. That's my whole spiel there. As long as you're being conservative with your overclocks, it's not really going to cause any damage or additional heat or electrical failures to your components and you're getting more performance out of it. So why the heck not? Uh, let's get a little more light on that side. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and share my screen here. Put you up there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, this is the MSI Afterburner application. In order to install this, you can Google MSI Afterburner. I would recommend installing it from their website. There are several third-party websites that also offer this, and it seems to be safe. There's no viruses on board or anything like that, but just get it from the source from MSI themselves. And by default, yours should look exactly like mine. If it does not, go over here to settings, go to user interface, and there are these different themes here. And while they are really cool and everything, some of these themes look really awesome. They have a steampunk one. They uh, actually change around where some of the controls are and whatnot. For so, so for the purpose of following along with me during this tutorial, I would just recommend going to, just going to MSI Afterburner Skin by Derek Skins or Derek's Designs. So we have the exact same look in the application. All right, so the first thing you wanna do, the very first time that you launch this application is you wanna come over here to where it says uh, the little search magnifying glass, the little Sherlock Holmes over here, and uh, you wanna go ahead and scan. This is gonna scan your PCI slot for whatever GPU or GPUs, plural, that you have selected so you can target which one you'd like to overclock. All right, so 10 minutes and 24 seconds later, we are complete and it exports your overclock curve to MSI Afterburner, sweet, sweet. So as you see, your graphics card should now be displayed here with the current driver version. You wanna be on the most up-to-date driver version because once you do install a new driver, You'll need to do all these overclock settings uh, again just to make sure that it's compatible with your driver and whatnot. So in this gauge over here, you're going to have your GPU temperature. You also have a graph down here that shows when it gets hot or anything like that. It'll give you your minimum and maximum temperature. Um, currently, I'm sitting at 59 degrees Celsius. And then you also have a monitor here for your voltage because when you're overclocking, you are increasing the voltage on your GPU, which will in turn increase the temperature. Uh, so you want to make sure that your case has good cooling and then also your GPU itself has um, adequate cooling with fans on the case of it and all that good stuff like that. As you see, you have your base and boost clock here. So base clock is when you're just the idle, you're not under load, you're not gaming, video editing, crypto mining, anything like that. You're just chilling, maybe navigating the windows or something like that. Um, and then your boost clock is obviously when you get into some high intensive gaming and stuff like that, when your graphics card boosts, boosts up the, uh, the speed that it's gonna be at. You can see that's also reflected on the gauge here by a white and then a red for boost clock over here. Now, if you ever get into any trouble while 
overclocking where it's causing uh, any stutters or judders or your your windows freezes up or anything like that inside the msi afterburner application you just press this reset right here and this will reset to your stock clock and all your stock defaults which is really awesome also right here this little windows apply here once you get the settings that you like and you we're going to do some testing with a couple benchmarks to make sure it's stable and everything and then once it is you're going to click this box here and what that's going to do is it's going to save those overclock settings to where Every time you start up Windows or whatever, MSI Afterburner is just going to apply those those uh, overclock settings for you. And then if you do run into issues, just unclick that bad boy there and reset to default and then basically start gradually, progressively, uh, moderately overclocking until you reach that, that threshold where you're starting to run into some performance issues and then back it off about 15% to a nice safe zone. All right, so we're going to put a nice little tasteful moderate overclock on this bad boy. So you can look up your specific graphics card online. Just Google your graphics card and then overclock settings. And there'll probably be a bunch of forums of people that have done benchmarks and testing with uh, different overclock settings telling you what's kind of a moderate, tasteful, um, safe overclock that you're going to squeeze a little bit more free performance out of your graphics card. I don't know why I did air quotes. It really is squeezing free performance out of your components. And then, uh, you know, what is like the, the ceiling the, where you start running into throttling issues and voltage issues and stuff like that. So when you reach a certain temperature in Celsius, when your GPU is going to start throttling back down, reducing its performance to keep you from overheating. And if it cannot stabilize itself, then it's going to go ahead and basically shut down the graphics card. And in turn, that's going to basically shut down your PC as well. So as you see, when I reach 83 degrees Celsius, that's when my graphics card is kind of reaching its maximum here. And as you see, the max that I've touched here during that bench, that initial benchmark was 72 degrees. I also do crypto mine um, daily with this thing and I monitor temperatures when I do that. And this thing never exceeds about 70 to 71 degrees Celsius when I'm mining. Uh, and it shows my GPU load at 100. So it has my GPU tacked out, obviously mining the algorithms and stuff. And, uh, yeah, so this the, right now, I know I can overclock a little bit because I'm so far away from throttling. And if you can't get it just right with your mouse, you can use the left and right arrows on your keyboard and that will get you exactly where you want to be. Memory here, this isn't your system's RAM, random access memory. This is the VRAM, so the video RAM, the memory that's on your graphics card itself. And then for the core clock, we're gonna go to 20, which again, see, I can't nab it just quite. So I'm gonna use the left and right on my keyboard and that will target it and, and then we're going to run a benchmark so one of them that i highly recommend that people have been using with uh overclocking for the longest time is called unigen valley unigen valley doesn't run on my pc i do have other unigen benchmarks in fact the one we are going to run is from unigen they do make a ton of uh benchmarks this one is called super position now with this overclock here we're going to keep msi after burner open we're not going to have this full screen so we can still monitor our temperatures and also uh, our base and boost clock, what our GPU is doing. And you'll be able to tell when you're watching the windowed version of the overclock, uh, if there's any kind of stuttering, juddering, tears in the screen, any broken textures, or it just freezes, stops working completely, then you know you're not at a stable clock and you know you need to drop down your settings or even reset back to, to factory and start over again. We're gonna use superposition over here. We're gonna do uh, custom because that allows us not to have full screen on. DirectX, we're gonna do 1080p uh, with high settings here. Uh, and we're gonna leave, leave the effects, the depth of field and motion blur on. And as you see, the video RAM taxation here is really, really low. I have eight gigs of memory on this 2060 Super over here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run our benchmarks. I'm recording you guys outside of my screen because by screen recording through Streamlabs OBS, that is putting an additional load on my PC as I am screen recording at 1080p 60 frames per second. And I also have a webcam overlay with a software program that's blurring my background. And granted, the, the benchmarks would still work, they'd still run, but it's not going to reflect um, the exact performance of just doing one specific task like the benchmark that we're gonna be doing here. I'm also gonna turn off this third monitor over here, which is this uh, 40 inch TV, because again, uh, that's just an additional load on the GPU that really doesn't need to be there. We have our MSI Afterburner program up here on the top monitor. Now, if you do not have dual monitors, not a big deal, but I would run this not in full screen so that way you can still monitor your temperatures and your base and boost clock and make sure that everything's squared away. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run 1080p extreme with all default settings. So that is uh, extreme shaders and textures, depth of field and motion blur turned on. 
as you see my video ram or vram on the actual graphics card itself is less than 50 percent utilized i have eight gigs of ram in this um this 2060 super it's actually reflecting 8.2 megabytes so a little over eight gigs i don't know why let's go ahead and run this bad boy this is a really really good benchmark i use this benchmark um a lot because it is super super graphically intensive and it definitely will stress your gpu out um, and it's also a really cool looking benchmark too to really showcase the power of your gpu you got some little music with it here we'll go ahead and turn that down so we're at 70 uh we're at 70 Celsius right now, so our GPU is not getting hot at all. Performance is pretty weak on the benchmark, though. It's reflecting our overclock in the top right screen of the benchmark here for not only our, our graphics card itself, which is at... Yep, it's reflecting. These are matching up 19.5 gigahertz, 19.5, 19.20. It's bouncing around there. Uh, and then also memory, 71 megahertz with the, with the clock we did there. 7100 mega heart, mega hearts, megahertz on the memory. Uh, it does show your temperature there is 72 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Celsius. All right, so the results are in. We got an average of 54 at that 4K test there. And that is also lower than what I usually get with just my standard clock. And the reason for that is this is not a founder's edition card from NVIDIA. This is actually a third party one from Gigabyte. So if you get one from something like Gigabyte or Aorus, or MSI that already, you know, that has a different case on it with maybe an additional fan, some RGB lights on it. A lot of those have a overclock on them from their factory. And this one does. It has a very slight overclock. I think it's only about uh, 2.5 or 3% over the Founder Series or whatever. But that overclock is is pretty much optimized for this card. But we are going to test. The, we are going to test further. We're going to bump up some of these settings a little bit more as my temperatures didn't get uh, crazy hot. They did get a little bit hotter at that 4k test at 74, but again, our, we don't start throttling until about 83 Celsius. All right, fellas, results are in and they're pretty decent. Nothing crazy or anything like that. I did make some uh, notes here of different configurations that I was running with different settings and whatnot. And what I ended up landing on, like I recommended to you guys, and I do strongly recommend this, the specific graphics card that you have, and not just like 2060 Super, because there's several versions of the 2060 Super. I have the Gigabyte one, so it's a third-party company that's already put an additional fan on there, a different heat sink, and done a slight overclock from their factory. So if you get a third-party company like Aorus, Gigabyte, MSI, etc., you know, it's going to be different than if you get like a Founder Series card. But if you do have a Founder Series card, search specifically for that, like NVIDIA Founders RTX 2060 Super, whatever you have. And read a, a few different articles. I tried a couple different settings that were in some forums and whatnot. They didn't really yield good results for me. In fact, they were actually worse frames per second in the benchmark. But then I found this article right here. This is the specific graphics card I have. This is their picture of the... Res uh, whoop, oh, jeep, jeepers. This is the picture of the settings that they used, which is exactly what I used to a T right here. It's a, and they said, using, using MSI Afterburner, we were able to overclock... A fair bit, with an increase to the core clock of 115 megahertz, which brings our total to 1930 megahertz. We also did observe boost clocks as high as 1240 megahertz and peak boost of up to 2060. That's funny because it's a 2060 super. 2060 megahertz. We also increased our memory offset by 500, which brings the total memory speed to 15 gigabytes. Not bad at all. So. Uh, I definitely do agree that starts pushing this 2060 Super more towards the heels of the 2070. So that's pretty awesome. And the results that I saw here, uh, like I said, are nothing too crazy, but I'm getting an additional 8 to 9 frames per second in 1080p benchmarks and an additional 3 to 4 frames per second in 4K. So that's pretty awesome. I game at 1440, so that's right in the middle there. We'll say I, I gained about 5 frames per second by gaming at uh, my, na my native settings of 1440, 144 hertz. So that's pretty sweet. And then also I ran a benchmark in NiceHash, which is the program that I use to crypto mine about 14 hours per day, basically. I just, whenever I'm not using my gaming PC, I have it mining. And uh, according to the benchmarks, my estimated profitability after my electrical cost is an additional 25 cents a day. So from uh, $5.15 to $5.50. $5.40. So that's pretty much all there is to it. You can go a lot more in depth with MSI Afterburner and who knows if this video does well and it gets a lot of likes and whatnot. And I know people actually, uh, it was well received and people enjoyed it and got value from it. Then I will make a more advanced tutorial of MSI Afterburner where I'll go in depth with some 
really advanced things that you can do to get your your GPU pushing the edge. I did a rather modest overclock because this graphics card is already overclocked in comparison to a Founder Series card. Increasing that even further with MSI Afterburner, I was able to net some pretty good gains. My temperature didn't really go up at all. Uh, even during benchmarking, I got up to 73, 74 Celsius, then it would drop right back down after the benchmark. And again, until you hit that, you know, 80, 84 Celsius, you're not even going to start um, throttling back performance and definitely not be seeing any damage to your card or anything like that. So that is going to do it, guys. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section down there below, and I will respond to you as soon as humanly possible. Subscribe for more gaming tutorials like this. I also do computer peripheral reviews, so keyboards, mice, headsets, and I custom build controllers. So hopefully I'll catch you guys around here, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.